beautiful. Okay. So we are here on the 1st of March for our fortnightly round table with the gorgeous Bryce from Esoteric Atlanta, Medina, and David will be joining us shortly when he gets out of bed because Australia, guys, it's very early in the morning. So it's late in the UK, mid-afternoon for you, Bryce, isn't it? And early the next day morning for Medina. Um, how are you all doing? Let's start with you, Medina, because you have got floods over there, haven't you? Absolutely, yes. Do you want me to start talking about that? <laughs> well, let's well, let, just see how you are first and how Bryce are, and then we'll okay. get into what's happening sure, sure. and where we all well, are. I'm not swimming, so that's one thing. <laughs> I haven't got my bathers on, I'm not swimming. So that, that, that's a positive right there. Um, yes, we've got a big topic to talk about with these floods. And I've got another huge topic to share that's incredibly um, fascinating and exciting and positive as well. So I'm really excited to you know, tell, tell you all about that. And um, I personally, I'm, I'm, I'm going good considering, you know, that there's a lot of energy here with, with all the, um, you know, the extreme hardship and challenges of what we're going through right now in Australia. And um, for some reason, I've been able to transmute it. So that's good because you know how you can pick up the energy around you um, and that can really impact on how you feel. I've been transmuting. So, yeah, I'm feeling good considering everything going on. Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant. And how are you doing in Atlanta, Bryce? I'm good. I mean, it's been crazy. We, it's just, it's like the energy is just very static right now is what it feels like. And I know energetically we're changing, like we're in the process of like flipping timelines is what I keep understanding. So things can be, that's maybe why my phone's not really working. I don't know. Um, but it's good. It's beautiful outside right now. We have this like tiny little window in Georgia where we actually have a spring and then it's just hot as hell. So um, we're in that tiny little window where it's really nice outside and it's pleasant before it becomes uh, like walking through a bowl of hot soup and gross and you're sweating in places you didn't even know could sweat. So, um, so but Southern girls don't sweat, we glisten. So it's good. So, so. I love that. <laughs> yeah, you radiate. And I think I'm joining Medina here over in the UK because after the storms last year that knocked out the trees, the power, etc. Um, I might be building an arc if this rain continues. So, um, but it's really weird because I have to have a little bit of giggle with you girls because, you know, I've said about, you know, the Mercury retro retrograde and things like this. And, you know, is it the fact that we focus on it that affects it? Well, this week after the storms, like everything in the house has gone wrong. So um, it's been a bit of a sort of catastrophe of disasters and, it's been quite funny for me because it's been really good way to put into practice all the things I talk about. Um, and I just always makes me laugh because I'm like, oh, I can notice myself reacting like this. I can notice. But on a good note, I must just tell you before we get into the serious stuff, as we speak, I have got my new baby is on her way over from Romania. Got a little oh. Mitzi cat because we know we lost our gorgeous fluffy Duffy. And so I've got a gorgeous new rescue cat on her way over oh. as we speak. So I might have to take some maternity leave soon. Oh, that's so I will be sharing her <laughs> journey with you and making some videos and showing everyone her second in. But I can't tell you how excited I am. I can hardly speak. I'm just <laughs> excited that I'm about to give birth to another little fur baby. Have you, have you got a name yet? She's actually called, she's already got a name, Mitzi. And from the photos agreed, we normally, normally our rescue animals, when they come in, they normally choose to change their name. But actually Idris, who came from Romania through the same rescue organisation that I'm getting her from, he suited Idris so much. And so we kept that. And we think we're going to keep Mitzi because from the pictures I've seen, it seems to really suit her. Um, but I'll let you know when she arrives and I'll ask her and see whether she wants to change it. <laughs> So, they get yeah. little passports when they come from Romania. Yeah, so they, they can... have to have all their passports and everything, and and the people that oh, transport them over. So she's on a whole van full of dogs, and she's the only cat. And um, so I won't be getting much sleep for the next couple of days. I don't quite know when she's arriving. It depends how their journey goes and everything. But I am beyond excited to be a mummy oh. again. So, and all the others know that I've had a word with them and they all know, so they're all in their best favour. The funny thing is, I won't keep this too long, but my, my son who's away at university and keeps saying, mom, don't get any more animals. He loves animals, but 
you know, I do have a habit of collecting them. And um, he doesn't realise that his room has been completely, because he's got the best room because we keep them separate, but so they can sniff the others and everything. So I forgot he's coming home for Easter and he doesn't realise that he's going to have a new little friend in there. So no one tell him. Don't tell yeah. anyone. <laughs> I love that. He loves all animals, but it is quite funny. It's like he comes home thinking his room and, and um, it's been turned into the new cat sanctuary. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. So yeah, tell awesome. us about then Medina. What is it? Tell us about the floods first. Okay. Well, it's absolutely uh, biblical, really, here in Australia. The whole thing is clearly bioengineered. Um, there's footage from um, a guy in um, America called Rob. Get his last name, but he he does the he traces the chem bombs and the, and the weather patterns and everything. And he, in his information, he he clearly um, indicates that these are all um, weather engineered um, events. You know, they're not naturally forming. I mean, there was even a, a, a news channel that went on and talked about how um, these look like they were artificially created he was on the mainstream news I've got I've got that video as well um, so you know you can see that it's not a natural event but basically um, it's probably the biggest um, disaster that we've had in Australia ever pretty much I mean the the biblical levels of um, flooding going from uh, Gympie potentially in in Queensland right down through New South Wales, and you know how big Australia is, right down to Victoria. It's, it's um, mammoth, you know, whole towns are completely underwater. Um, it's, they're estimating at least 3.5 million people have been affected. They're saying, don't even bother getting in your car and driving around. I'm right inside it too, because Tweed Heads is um, just in New South Wales down from Queensland. And um, we got, I'm just gonna share with you on the share screen if I may, um, we got this, the an, an evacuation order, if you can see that, to get out of the house and, and evacuate uh, two days ago. Can you see that? Yeah. Um, um, is that the evacuation order? Yeah, that you can see? Yeah. yeah. So, so that was that's what I got on on my phone. But um, we we were up a little bit, so we di we didn't move. We're still in the house, and we're okay. The the water levels have stayed fairly level here. They haven't risen too much in the last day, but you know, there's towns where people have been stranded on their roofs, and you know, families, and they haven't been able to be um, rescued by the military because they haven't been able to get to them, and. Um, you know the, the 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 number of people affected here is is um, probably bigger than any any other event I think that that we've ever experienced. And so all the animals. Exactly. That's exactly. Now I, I know. It. Well, my friend, he he's in a town now. This is fascinating. It's called Woodburn. Let me show you a picture of the bridge in Woodburn. He said he saw. Uh, and, and this don't is don't tell me anything more. please don't say anything. oh okay okay no, I, say that. I don't want to anyway. hear it it's not going to help anyone is it sure sure but anyway I'm just just trying to share with people how big this is and um see this this uh bridge here uh that bridge there um wow and can you can you see the yeah. that's that's the bridge and then this one here is um if you can see this um, one here, this is a town called Woodburn in New South Wales. Now, if you can see that, can you see that red brick building just there behind the bridge? Mm. Yeah. there. I lived there eight months ago. I lived there for about a year and a half. So we moved out eight months ago of that actual, and it's, it's part of a shop and um, it's completely underwater now, Woodburn. So I was actually in that like eight months ago. Um, and, and this is just, you know, one of the towns that has been um, impacted by these floods. So, you know, I think that if people can send, um, you know, there's so many things going on in the world, but to send prayers and blessings and, and, and positive energy to, um, you know, Australia at the moment in terms of 
these floods that would be greatly appreciated and there's there's two narratives i've heard which i, I want to share one is you know obviously that it's a, a dark activity um to create um um so that people can't protest and they can't you know push back against government so there's that that's one narrative the other narrative i have heard which i'm not saying is true or not but i'm just wanting to share information is that it's the white hats and that there's a lot of bunkers and underground um dumps around the whole byron region you know a lot of film people have moved to byron with multi-million dollar houses and things and and that they're and that the the white hats are clearing out these around that area but you know it's it's controversial obviously to say that and and it's hard to to know exactly what's happening but that's that's the two narratives that i'm hearing um and a, a few friends that have meditated said they felt that it was more the the white hats going in but then if you've got bunkers um aren't they extremely um highly engineered so that they can stop you know a lot of water coming in so then on some level maybe that's that's not plausible i don't know but um this is just what i'm wanting to share with people information so this is the extent of you know what's happening in australia at the minute um it's it's absolutely huge and i can't drive very far because all around me um there's flood waters so i can't i can't at the highways are closed all that sort of thing which is going to have a massive effect on stocks and supplies and everything. And isn't it interesting because we've got to be very careful because obviously this is going on YouTube um, with what we say, but you know, everything, the focus is on Ukraine and yet there's so much happening elsewhere in the work and it's sort of look here so that people don't look here and um, uh, yeah, it's just awful, isn't it? It's just absolutely awful. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Have you heard much about that in America, Bryce? Because we no, we don't get you, you know our, yeah. our media is very selective of what they tell. I mean, I don't watch the news anyway, so I don't think many people watching, you know, but you know, yeah. watch what they have to tell us. But yeah, we don't get any type of of information from. Um, shoot, we don't even get information of things happening in our own country half the time. You know, they yeah. don't even tell us. So so yeah, they're keeping that very selective um with what we understand as far as a collective consciousness where you know i think we're aware of that i think everybody watching is aware of that that we have to dig for our own information that's why it's so cool to have like friends all over the world that we can actually get the information from good morning good morning hi, hi david we're just um getting an update from medina on the flooding situation and she's been sharing some of the awful pictures and everything just to show just the sheer scale of what's been going on. And Bryce and I were just saying that, you know, we're not getting that reported over here at all. Right, yeah, it's insane over there. There's some... Yeah, it's, I was just saying, Dave, it's the, um, the largest disaster probably that's ever happened in Australia, the number of people that are impacted and the level of destruction, you know, the, all the houses that have gone under, 15,000 in Brisbane. Um, and, you know, whole towns like uh, Lismore um, and, um, you know, the whole Byron region and all the way down, they say it could extend to Victoria from Gympie. I can remember actually, Medina, when I was in um, travelling in Australia in, was it 90 or 91? I can't remember what. And there were really, really horrific floods then. And yeah. I can remember I was completely cut off in Townsville and Magnetic Island. <laughs> I was staying on Magnetic Island at a place where they had sharks and the whole place flooded and everything was underwater, like right up to our chest and neck area. And we had to evacuate like our tents in the night and all the sharks had got loose from the tanks and we were just, hours. Oh, no. But that was horrendous because we cut off for weeks and weeks. We couldn't get off Magnetic Island and the whole of Townsville was underwater and everything and it's horrendous. Gosh. Never seen anything yeah. like it, yeah. Do you guys in Australia, this might be yeah. a silly question, but do you guys get like hurricanes and is this something that's, are you guys used to having when you're on the coast, having like issues with flooding and? Well, there are cyclones, particularly up north, you know, around Cairns and, you know, north there. Um, but um, the, this, this storm is clearly artificially engineered on so many levels. Um, you know, there's, there's footage really indicating that. So, um yeah that's all i can say really what, what do you think dave i watched a video yesterday 
Yeah, it's, can you hear me okay? Yeah, quite quiet for me. Yeah, I got to be a little bit quiet because people are asleep. But okay. Um, I watched a video yesterday where the, there was, I think it was a weatherman, a weatherman in, I don't know whether it was you know, Queensland or, or New South Wales, and he actually mentioned on the story. Did you see that, Medina? Yes, so I, I did mention it at the beginning that he was a mainstream oh, right. media guy, yeah. and um, yeah, it was incredible. Um, Very strange. That he yeah. mentioned it. Very nice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He he um he he basically said that it looked artificially created um on mainstream media. I mean, if that doesn't wake some people up, what will? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, they wouldn't normally say that, would they? It's very odd. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not the first story we've had about about spraying either. You know, there was one a couple of weeks, well, a couple of months ago as well. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, they even put out one in Queensland saying that um, because they had so many people asking the council what's happening with the weather and the chemtrails and things, and they said that they are spraying, you know, these barium and different chemicals um, for, for weather engineering. So they, they did admit it, yeah. Mm. Well, just stop like, doing it. It's interesting to know why. Yeah. Stop repenting like, your sins. It's just stop it now <laughs> so funny i remember like you know in school and studying old man in the sea man versus nature nature always wins but now we're learning that nature isn't actually nature in some in some some instances you know i keep thinking about i don't know if we can even say this but new orleans what 2005 um mm. That took mm. about, I mean, New Orleans is under sea level, so I know that they're used to um, used to dealing with that kind of stuff. I mean, the graveyards in New Orleans, they, they put the bodies above the ground in like vaults because otherwise you would just have bodies floating around every time there was a hurricane. Um, but, you know, you look at what happened at that. And back in 2005, I don't think any of us were aware that this wasn't just an act of nature. Mm. That this was actually something that was mm. targeted. And it, it's you know. so um, prevalent. You know, there is so many um, things happening around the world that, that are artificially created. And uh, we probably don't realise the extent of, of how much um, through uh, the different um, H and C, um, things like that. I can't say the words, but yeah. Yeah. I think I was telling Catherine in some of my studies, um, my deep dives into history, um, I was when I think I was looking into Boudicca and doing a story of Boudicca, but there was some information I found that even the United Kingdom, the whole British Isles at one point were tropical. Mm. And that's wild because mm. we don't think of England as being tropical, you know? And the sure, yeah. I, can, I can think of another example too, you know, the whole desert in the middle of Australia, they say that there was um, a nuclear ex explosion that happened and that's why it's all you know desert in the middle mm -hmm. of Australia and it used to have um, plant life and everything like that and it, in fact um, Elizabeth uh, Prophet Claire or Claire Prophet Claire Elizabeth Prophet I can't remember her name she's amazing um, you know spiritual um, sort of way show a leader she actually got uh, visions coming through to her from from the divine and from the angels telling her that there was this nuclear explosion in Australia and she, when she came to Australia she talked to people and she could feel this um, like a fear coming from people and she traced it back um, on a soul level to these explosions, these nuclear explosions where they were holding this cellular fear because they had a memory of these explosions that happened in, in, in Australia. Fascinating. I want to would this be like the fall of Atlantis, like nuclear explosions, like that far back where something had happened to cause... Uh, it, no, a bit after that, you know, that happened uh, in Australia, um, after Atlantis and, and, and all that. Yeah, yeah. It's a very good sort of it's a topic that's come up a lot between myself and sort of my friends is that when you look at the human race, and I've heard Zach Bush talk about it, and I love Zach Bush, um, he's such a knowledgeable man. Um, uh, it's really interesting because so many forms, if you take whales, for example, and a lot of cetaceans have got a hugely high emotional intelligence, a hugely high, very sophisticated communication systems, a very different type of intelligence to humans and things. But we've never seen any other species that we're aware of 
on on the planet ever just inflict destruction and just uh, upset the whole ecosystem and the 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 functioning of the whole planet in the way that human does and it does make me wonder how many more chances as a species we will be given mm. yeah yeah, well, um, I, I have something really positive on that note to share, if, if that's all right. I, I um, had an amazing thing happen because um, in terms of going forward as a species, it, it's really positive. Um, I have a beautiful master in Malaysia that um, contacted me. I'll just show you a photo of him. His name is Master Hock. And um, he said that he got a very strong um, guidance to, because he works planetarily, to close um, in Turkmenistan what was called the Gates of Hell. Let me show you the photo. And so here it is here. And um, so what happened was um, he, he got this guidance and then he put out a call to me and he said, look, you know, we, we have to do this. And, and so I said, look, I'll, put, I'll share it on my channel. So I shared this, uh, and this was on the 22nd of the 2nd, 2022, 20, uh, that uh, we needed to come together, unify and, and do meditations and things to close this energy. This It's like a really dark portal in, in Turkmenistan. And so I put it out there and lo and behold, you know, I'd hope we'd just get a few people on board. It pretty much went viral. And um, we had um, 32,000 people watch this and so many people contacted me. We had about 368 comments and lots of people contacted me. And people would get together with 40 members of their family and do this um, meditation practice right at that time, which if anyone wants to look at it, it's on my channel. And this whole story is explained. It's absolutely fascinating. And um, so we all, all these people around the world worked on this. And um, then we got guidance um, um, at the end, and we did an update where he tuned in um, to, to, to the, you know, the divine realms, and we were collectively able to seal or close this very, very um, magnified, negative, nefarious energy that was in Turkmenistan, and even um, the, the, they were calling at a governmental level for people to come together, uh, the scientists, and do something about it. But And so energetically, you know, we all, we all um, unified and did this, and people got the most amazing visions about it, of what happened. And then when you put all the information together, it correlated, because, you know, Mary Magdalene, <laughs> she was involved, um, <laughs> which interests you, Bryce, with all your wonderful series on Mary Magdalene, and, um, you know, uh, Yeshua, and um, Archangel Michael, and all came together and we and we were able to actually close this and this is huge for the planet um it's going to make a big difference and very very positive so it's a fascinating video there's two one um, where we call on people to do it and another where we update people and Hawk tells a whole story from the beginning of actually what happened and how we did it and it's it's wonderful it's it, i was just so grateful that um to be a part of it and that we were able to do that so yeah Awesome. You know, it's funny, you talked about how many chances do we get, and the reason why I asked about Atlantis is that I've, over and over, I keep, keep hear, hear, hear people say that right now, what we're living through mirrors mm. the fall of Atlantis, and we are all, most of us were there for that mm. fall, and, um, but this time, it's probability, and I want to start saying probability over prophecy, because I don't want people to let rest on their laurels, it's a probability, that we are going to swing the other way, move into positive, a positive mm -hmm. where that human beings are going to like, we're going to, the nefarious beings are not going to succeed this time because last time they did, and that's what caused the great flood that caused Atlantis to fall. Um, and of course, in Atlantis, we were using uh, crystal grids, uh, energy from rocks, which a lot of us are using again now. And we've heard stories that there are crystalline grids underneath us. Um, on our earth that will start to reemerge again once we're able to shift the vibration of, of humanity towards that place. And so I think for a lot of us, there is a lot of like PTSD maybe from reliving something we've already lived through, except for that time, it didn't end that well for humanity. Um, but this time, the probability is that we will we will succeed at this point. And it's funny you mentioned Mary Magdalene, because yes, uh, Mary Magdalene has been a in my life for most of my life. I mean, um, 
her name Magdalene, we've been told that it was it it was because she was from a town called Magdala. But now we know that's not true. Um, most of her story that they've told us is not true. Magdalene means the tower, mm. as in the tower moment. Yes, yes. And and let, let me say too that the, this whole uh, event with closing this um, energy, we, we related it to the Atlantean times and we talked about that and we also used utilised a crystal grid to close this energy. So all the things you're talking about were, were part of what we were doing as well. Very interesting. Yeah. So we just got to sit with our trauma, move through it and be the badass war, warriors well, we were well, supposed to think- be. I think that's why I do my sessions too, because, you know, you're helping people to transmute the soul cellular memory of trauma, release that so that we can move on in new energies. And um, sometimes people don't know how to transmute that. So I think it's really important to have ways that you can um, tap into that and um, acknowledge it, recognize it, and then be able to heal it. Uh, it, It's really important part of our progress to go in on a soul level and work on ourselves to transmute any soul wounding that we're still holding in our bodies and you know that that's that's why my sessions are so great because we do past life clearing and energy healing and all that sort of thing it's really important at this time and ancestral lineage healing you know genetic healing and and even just to do the technique where you um ask for forgiveness on behalf of all your ancestors that is such a crucial thing to do right now because you you're the only one incarnated on the earthly plane that can actually ask for that forgiveness they can't do it from the other side so you know something that seems relatively simple like that is going to have major major implications for your whole ancestral genetic line yeah, and, and we're just just people encourage us to do that too. Yeah, Dean is going to give the listeners to all this video a discount code at the end, so we'll cover that. David, what's been happening where you are? Because I know you've had a bit of a yo-yo, haven't you? Where um, things were were meant to be getting better, and then suddenly you've had a bit of a back turn. What are your thoughts on that? About where you are? Uh, I don't know really. It's it's a funny one. So we were supposed to open up, but the for the for the uh people that have had the thing in the arm we were going to open up about a month ago now and they pushed it back uh, they didn't say when but they just they uh about a week ago they said we'll open up on the 4th of march mm-hmm. and but it's still just it's not really open it's only open for certain people and but the funny thing is is that they said we want to have a a higher dosage of you know triple you know triple shots uh, and now apparently we're at 60% after having mm. been nowhere near that like a month ago. So I just don't, I don't know, I don't buy it, but it's just really strange. And and here's the funny thing, over East, a couple of months ago, Medina will probably remember this, they said that um, they expected the thing to, the, the uh, Omicron or whatever you want to call it, they expected it to peak. And since then, a lot of restrictions have been rolled back over East and they don't wear muzzles anymore and stuff they've now said the same thing here so they're expecting it to peak in like two weeks or something so if, if that's anything to go by it's possible we could see some restrictions roll back into you know maybe a couple of weeks later you know three or four weeks five weeks i don't know i think the whole narrative is just naturally crumbling right now and they're trying no to um, yeah yeah they're, they're, they're trying to grab onto something else now to and uh, which of course you know we've got the um flooding now that they can um focus on so yeah it, it was bound to happen in that way because they can't sustain that anymore and over here the focus is very much on war but one of the things we were talking about sort of off camera david before you joined and i'd really love your opinion on is what i've been noticing and and bryce and medina were sort of um agreeing that they've been noticing it as well is that a lot of people are still very, very focused on clinging on to information from someone else. And it's a bit like the mainstream, for for our network of listeners and things, the mainstream media has been replaced almost by these sort of channels. And, but people are replacing, believing what they heard on the mainstream media with then taking as gospel what they're hearing from their favorite 
YouTube channel forever. And, it, and it's still missing out the link of that personal responsibility and taking on board and taking the time and adjusting your lifestyle so that you're listening to your internal guidance rather than just being obsessed with what someone else is saying. How, what do you think about that? What have you been noticing? Yeah, I, I, I'm sure we all see comments in our videos where people are saying, this is, this is what happened, this is what happened, this mm. is what happened. And I'm just like, I don't think, I don't even know if any of it happened, to be honest. I just, yeah, until we see, until we see something, and unfortunately, generally that thing has to come out of the MSM, until we see a complete, well, not necessarily. I mean, we can see stuff that's happening over in Europe that we know is not true. Uh, but until, until what, what I'm referring to is more so people are saying, oh, this person's been arrested, this person's been executed, this, you know, things like that. Um, you know, we don't know any of that's true, really. Yeah. Um, we kind of just have to go off of what we what we think, but or what we feel. But there's definitely it's, more, it's more your family and friends and people around you that know, don't they, Dave? I mean, you, you can't obviously. There's nothing else that you can listen to apart from the people around you, your personal um, sort of um, connections that that you that you know what's really going on. Um, everything else is um, just um, hearsay. Right. If it's boots on the ground type stuff, then it's, yeah. then it's, it's a lot different. Yeah. You know, and that goes for anything, but I don't know. Really. I mean, we, it, it's interesting though. You see things like that, you, that weatherman and the, the report in the media. And we, we literally had, there was one weekend a couple of months ago where pretty much the whole country was sprayed like on mm -hmm. like huge. And then they had, a story on it on the mainstream in the mainstream saying talking about it <laughs> so you kind of there's definitely something going on you know they're wanting you to know you know they're they're yeah. wanting you to make yeah. that connection um it's so like being like drip fed <laughs> a little bit coming out yeah it is it is mm. there's definitely there's definitely people releasing information they want us to know and to kind of make the connection around um mm. it, it's not happening fast enough i i but i also think that it comes back to that thing like other white hats what percentage of control do they have or or influence mm -hmm. do they have and i'd say there's definitely there's definitely an element of influence there but control wise i don't know i mean if, if they really had control we wouldn't be seeing all the devastation we've been seeing you know in any anywhere because yeah. so it's, it's my like it's, that's that gets me when i i'm really pissing me off and i know i've used the term movie on my channel because of censorship this is not a movie guys and you're right mm -hmm. if this was a movie and it's just the white hats doing all this and the white hats are also psychopaths you know like this is this is a war this yeah. is like there are still and and i think when we get on this like this thought process that oh it's all a movie and it's all fake and blah 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 then we we relax onto our laurels we are this is about humanity this is not yeah. about just government leaders and certain celebrities it's not just about the kennedys or the trumps or like whatever it's it's about us and we mm. have to get our shit together. We can't mm. sit around and, and just pretend like what we heard because this person is not really this person and, you know, wink, wink. No, no, we, we all have to do our part because we're in this together. You know, we literally yeah. are all walking each other home. Like we are in this together. No one's, I talked about this with Sean Stone. Like don't sit around, eat popcorn and wait for the Kennedys to do something. Mm. You're on the planet I, I, too. But can it's, I just say, it's also the thing more that's so yeah. It's also more than humanity because we keep getting, like we were just saying about the floods, it's every species on the planet, plant and animal. And what gets me is everyone keeps saying the truth always comes out in the end. No, it doesn't. I've still no idea what really happened in World War II and World War I. I've got an inclination now, but I need to do a yeah. hell of a lot more research to really know. And even the research, you know, it's all twisted. Uh, so people keep saying, oh, the truth will come out and we'll have the new implants and it's against the law, but they don't care it's against the law. No one's been obeying the laws for since time began hence all these things happened and 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 equally about it's biblical and and as you know better than probably all of us Bryce it's like yeah but it's selective which bits of the bible you know we know it's everything's been manipulated so oh yeah for me it's like this whole thing about where are we just like you were all saying boots on the ground David where, where are we right here right now what are we saying 
I don't know what's happening in the Ukraine. The only thing I would put my hand up and I would I would bet everything on is the fact that what we're being told, you can almost reverse it. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't have personal friends in Ukraine. I've never been there. I the political system. I was watching the Oliver Stone film, which is absolutely brilliant. But I need to rewatch it probably about five times because there's so much information in there that's new to me. I, I, it's quite a lot to take in all at once. And but where are we now? What are we feeling? What can we influence on our local level? What can we put out energetically ourselves? Because everything else, even everything we're talking about, is all hearsay, isn't it? The biggest energy that I'm getting at the moment with clients is about everyone taking personal responsibility for themselves. So it's all about sovereignty, both individually and collectively, even as countries. It all boils down to that. So what level of personal empowerment are you stepping into? Are you embracing within yourself? Or are you giving your power away to everyone else and allowing them to control and manipulate you? You know, this, this is the key, key, uh, fundamental core factor of everything that's going on, which is us um, recognizing that we are infinite divine creator gods and that we can embrace that power within ourselves now and move forward in the evolution of ourselves and the planet, or we can get left behind energetically. Yeah, it's funny. I was talking about this on uh, David Zublik's show today. And um, we, I don't know if you guys have ever read the Ramayana. Um, it's one of my favorite. I love all the Hindu stories because they're such a metaphor and it's, it's about Ram. Um, who is one of the avatars of God and his wife Sita gets uh, stolen or abducted by Ravayana, who's this demon, demon God and takes her over to Sri Lanka. And so Ram hires Hanuman, who is, it's Tuesday, it's the day of Hanuman. He's uh, the monkey God. He's very military. Oh my gosh, Hanuman, he was working in the, ga the gates of, you know, what we were talking I love, about. I love you, Hanuman. Yeah, I love Hanuman in my car that yeah, you should he, watch the so, video, Bryce, because he talks all about the Monkey King. It's a festival. Oh, Hanuman! <laughs> yeah, he, he so Hanuman, well, Hanuman. He was his father is by the breath of the wind. He's the, the son of the wind. So he has this like these special abilities, but he forgets. He forgets that he has these abilities, and when he remembers who he is, that's when he's able to like jump all the way from India to Sri Lanka to defeat Ravana, who is this demon that can't be defeated. He defeats him and he brings Sita, rescues Sita, and brings him brings Sita back to Ram. Well, the whole metaphor of the story is Ram is God, Sita is your soul, Hanuman is your courage, mm -hmm. and we all have to remember who the fuck we are. They Absolutely. tried so hard to put this veil over us. You carry the spark of God in you. You that mm. light behind somebody's eyes, that's not their eyeball. That's their soul. Mm. And that's powerful. And instead of, of, of sitting back on our laurels and be like, oh, it's a movie, they've got it, they'll take care of it. No, we have to take care of it. We are Hanuman. We are the ones that are going to return the soul of humanity back into the light. And that has to start with you. That doesn't mean that everybody watching has to create a YouTube channel or go out and do all this stuff. No, just sit with yourself. Start with you. Because that's where it shifts everything. If you can shift yourself, it's you said it once, uh, Catherine, in a show, it was brilliant. I can't remember what show it was on. We talked about vibrating forks, you know, yeah. for. And when one, it, it always pulls the other up. And so if we can all just stop looking in our neighbor's backyard. It's like, if you ever go to therapy, they always tell you, don't look in somebody else's backyard, look in your own backyard and start working on ourselves. And yeah, that's hard to do. It sucks sometimes to have to sit there and look at yourself because you have to look at the, the dirty, dark parts as well. But through it all, you find, you remember, you're that Hanuman, you remember who you are. You are a child of the most high. The same creator that created the Rocky Mountains made you like, that's it's how bad bad. you are. Absolutely. You know, when you sit within your own energy and you're still and you're in your own presence, you automatically notice that your energy rises. It, your frequency yeah. will rise. Mm -hmm. It's when you're tapping into all the other stuff that your, your frequency drops. And the reason why it's rising, your energy and your frequency, is because you're tapping into the divine energy. So you're tapping into your divine connection, your higher self, something higher than yourself. And so just even that practice of being in stillness or sitting in nature and putting your feet on the ground, connecting with Mother Earth, just that practice itself, you'll notice that your energy automatically will start raising. And we all need to just be mindfully raising our energy at the moment. 
mm-hmm. and laughter. Watch a funny movie. Watch something. Go go hang out with your girlfriends and just laugh. And our guy friends, if you're David, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> he's, he's one of the girls tonight. Um, Can I raise the vibration and talk about? So Friday night, I'm sitting there with my family, and we're like, right, we're gonna just tune off from all this and watch a movie together. So I get on the phone and I message Bryce. And I said, because I'm rubbish. I can't even, I don't even know how to turn my TV on. I can't find anything. So I was like, come on, what what can I watch? She said, oh, David Zuber, it's just mentioned this movie. What was it called? Midsummer. Midsummer. So it's about this Swedish people going off to retreat. Now, I'm not going to ruin it to you because I insist David and Medina watch it. Well, the funny <laughs> thing is, Bryce, before you'd mentioned that, I'd been out for breakfast with one of my really lovely friends, and she was talking about going on a retreat and it was a retreat where we were going to take some medicinal products. And I was like, oh, I really want to do this. I've never done this before because I thought I know you can do it without all of those. But I thought quite fancy treat it, cheat, cheating. And because she's very responsible, I would trust going somewhere with her. So I was just umming and ahhing about whether to book on this retreat to take some psychedelics. At my age, it's quite funny. And anyway, and then I watched this midsummer thing. Oh my God. I felt so bad. You text me, you're like, I'm not going to bed. And what did you say at the beginning? You're like, oh, I can't be mean to my sisters anymore. <laughs> like, it's so hysterical. You've cool. got to watch it. It's about this sort of cult in Sweden. I won't say any more. And afterwards, I messaged you by saying, My husband says, I'm never allowed to choose him in again. Now he went to bed and was fine. And I've had the weirdest dreams ever since and everything. So if you want a bit of light relief, watch Midsummer. I'll put the link below. It was hysterical. But it shows the power of the mind, though, doesn't it? Like you talked about, David, on your video about how you'd been watching that channel and then you started Search Your Track. The power of the mind and then how it triggers all these other things that are obviously within you. Because my husband slept like a log. I didn't. <laughs> well, I will tell you. So the the director of that movie, I, after I texted oh. you and I was like, "Oh, that's the last one I watched," because David Zubik told me to watch it. Um, I went and was looking up information because I was trying to find a link for you, and um, I found a movie that he had done before this that apparently was better than Midsummer. So I, of course, watched it. It was called Hereditary. Holy crap! I had the weirdest dreams. For, like it is, but it's that psychological. You know, it's like those old Hitchcock movies before they yeah. had all the, um, equipment to make things like. Um, super like you know in your face horror but it was like the psychological and I think I think the thing though Catherine is that we have become aware that this psychological stuff uh revolving we'll just say certain religious beliefs mm. is real exactly it's that's what got real. me this is what got me because it was dark, completely real to me I was like oh my god I can see I mean it, it even when you do meditations with people, you have to be careful because sometimes within them that these um, people that create these meditations have control um, structures within them where when you do their meditation, you're actually putting yourself under them energetically and they're becoming yeah. like your guru or they're, ener- they're going to be energetically controlling you from that point because you've, you've sort of unconsciously put yourself within their um like as a student under them and and so you've just got to even be mindful when you do meditations or when you watch something that you're not tapping into energies that are going to in some way unconsciously be um manipulating you yeah well the good thing is mum if you're watching you won't be i'm not doing any mushrooms now because it's put me off <laughs> by that no i'm far too scared now so i'm just going to stick to my joe dispenser meditations and do it all myself but I, I just had to have a laugh with it because it was it tied in. If anyone watches it, it ties into everything we're talking about because it's a different type of mind control. And, you know, it just shows how powerful these messages at whatever level are if you're susceptible to them. And what what was obvious because of all the research when things we've all been talking about, I was much more susceptible to it than, say, my husband was. And it yeah. was very interesting to see the, see the difference and, and how it affects us very differently. But I had to have a giggle with it because I asked and I got. <laughs> well, five years ago, I would have watched that and been like, oh, it's just a Hollywood film. Like, exactly. 
the shit that happened and now I'm like oh, this yeah. happened like this is real <laughs> you know? um, this is real so yeah. it's I mean it's beautifully it's you can tell the director they're they're beautiful it's beautifully done that this yeah. is obviously a beautiful landscape but um yeah it's a bit of a mind twister that one so um but yeah but the thing too is the beautiful thing though once you become aware of these subliminal messages, whether it's coming from movies or the radio or whatever, once you become aware of it, you can pinpoint it. And therefore oh, yeah. you kind of even start to take your t power back because you understand um, what they're trying to do. And once you have that awareness, it's like one of my favorite sayings is once you see it, you can't unsee it. Mm -hmm. Like it's it, you can't, once you see it, you can't unsee it. You know exactly what's happening. Um, and it's funny, like we go back now and I, I'll go back and watch like the past 20 years, which is still so hard for me to believe that 20 years was ago was 2002, but I'll go back and watch stuff and you'll see stuff now that you missed before that you Lately. completely missed. And it's like, holy crap. Um, but, and that's, and that is the good thing about the probability of us moving into a better place is because so we talked about was Lucy Davis. Like so many of us are aware now that it has changed. The, it's already starting to change the frequency of the collective because so many of us are aware now that, that it's, it's eventually going to start that, like that vibrational tuning fork. It's eventually going to start to wear off on those in our surrounding areas, you know? So I can't believe, I'm just still shocked that you guys are still like, like you, David, are still living in an area where there's all these restrictions. I mean, we're pretty much like just everything's normal here. So going back, we've got, we've got more cases than we've ever had. We've got a higher thing, you know, shot rate than we've ever had, obviously. But we've got 5,000 cases now. When we had during, at the, at the peak, we had nothing. <laughs> it's just stupid. Like, and is anybody making that connection? You know, like people that are, that have bought into the narrative, are they not seeing that, that mm. it's, uh, well, at the very least, the things either aren't working or they're actually causing the, yeah. you know, I don't know. That's right. That's right. It's yeah. so illogical. It just doesn't make sense. You know, in Victoria, they're quoting numbers of 90%. I mean, it's absolutely not that if you muscle tested, there's something maybe like 40%. You know, uh, if you muscle test with kinesiology, but um, yeah, when you listen to these sources, it's just so much um, false information. Mm. I do, what frustrates the hell out of me, and I think I'm going to develop Tourette's so over this. <laughs> I keep swearing about it. <laughs> but it's like, I can't believe that we're still, you know, as a as a collective talking about cases and things like this because. When you have the mm. rational comfort, I mean, I've got all my scientific friends and I have a rational conversation about, you know, you know that the PCR test can't diagnose anything. And I say, yes, 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 you understand it. And then in the next sentence, they're talking about cases. And I'm just like, yeah. what the yeah. fuck are you talking about? Do you not get it's like how many pink uniform corns do you need to see fly over you? It's so ridiculous, but the, it's amazing how quick it gets into terminology. Now, like over in the UK, everything's been dropped in England at the moment, and it's following suit in Wales and Scotland and Ireland. And yet I go out today, and there's all these people still with, like, masks over their mouth. And all I think about is what Charlie Ward says, but it's like wearing a condom over your bollocks. <laughs> And it's so ridiculous. It's like, and they're all doing it. And you've got school children getting on the bus with it. And and I'm like, what are you do? I just I feel it's like I'm living life, in a though, different world. Yeah. And I think it's harder for us because I know I think most of us do most of our work now from home, like with the mm -hmm. YouTube. So we're surrounded all day whether we're on zoom or you know the people we choose to see in our lives in our hometowns by people who are like us who think like mm -hmm. us and so when you're put in situations where you're surrounded by people who don't think like us it's quite shocking it kind of shocks the system a little bit um mm -hmm. that people you know you think people are joking sometimes and they're dead serious that they and it's like are we yeah, are we living on the same the same world like this is this is, but it's like that that other movie, Don't Look Up, that you had yes. to watch, Catherine. It's the same thing. Don't don't look up. You know, it's 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 it's. If you guys haven't seen that movie yet, is it a horror film? No, you would, you'd love it, David. You'd because I, I don't do horror films anymore. No. <laughs> After, uh... <laughs> and this other one that Bryce said, it's not a horror film. I've never I could I've never watched a horror film in my life and never would. 
because I just can't. I can't. I can't see why you do that. And this one's not a horror film, is it? But no, don't look up. You, oh, oh, David, you'd love it because it is just. Did that just come out? That's the one with. Uh, it's fairly recent, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of big names, which is very interesting because it's basically. Yeah. Um, I mean, what they discovered this like. My mind's gone blank. This uh, rock. What do they call that? Right. Yeah, right. That's it's it. Gonna hit the earth, and then and they're all in denial, and like that was such a mess. Saying, and it's just, it's all about the mainstream media and everything. But that it's oh, hysterical, yeah. and you've got to watch it right to the end if you watch it, because the ending is fantastic. <laughs> I'm not going to say anymore. It's just fantastic. <laughs> um, I, I guess, I, I guess that it's all about consciousness, though, isn't yeah. it? You know, the, the movie sounds like it's just pinpointing or illustrating the, the difference in consciousness and and I think none of us realize what a chasm and what a divide there was in the consciousness between all people that that exist on the planet you know we thought we were all more like-minded and that we we're all more on the same page but you, you you're just shocked by this um, complete contrast in uh, in the perception of reality mm. yeah but yeah that thing reveals the truth like quite like a psyop yeah. Do we want to know? So one of the things I was thinking about today on my dog walk in the pouring rain, hence my hair. Um, but I was thinking today, I was someone sent me a video and said, Oh, you must listen to this. And I thought, oh well, I'll listen to it. And it was another psychic giving another uh, now, was she she was psychic, but actually it was quite an astrological prediction. And I was just sitting there thinking, well. I don't want to know all of this, actually, because one, it might or might not happen, but all it was doing was taking me, I've had to work very, very hard. I'm a natural in your head person. And so I've had to work very, very hard to get myself back into my head, head space and be in the present moment. And I'm doing quite well at it, generally speaking now. And then when I listen to a lot of the astrological, and it's not that I don't think astrology is great. I do think astrology is great. And I think it's got a lot to add. But in moderation, because it's very much like this is going to happen on that date and this is going to happen on that date. And I found myself consciously feeling that I was then taken out of the present moment straight into back into living your life for what's coming again, which is surely is the whole point of what we're trying to get out of. So I think it's it's what we all talk about is balance, isn't it? It's, it's yes, this information can be amazing, but don't stay there too long because if you're constantly focused, like she was saying, I think it was the 4th and 5th of April are gonna be massive dates. And I'm like, I don't wanna live my life waiting for the 4th and 5th of April, because this might be the last month I've got on this world. I wanna make- Giving your power away. away. Giving your yeah. power away. Like what we were saying before, you know, when you, when you focus on those things, you're giving your power away uh, because you're putting the authority of what's happening, you're giving it to someone else where you should be getting that authority within yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. And it, it's, it's a very easy, I can see the trap because mm. it's an innate lack of, of, of most humans in their own self-confidence to, to listen yeah. to themselves, whereas That's it's it. much easier That's to it. put these people. And what I'm seeing is instead of the Hollywood movie stars on the pedestal, we've now got all these people that yeah. are predicting things up on the pedestal. And for me, it's just a state, straight swap. It's yeah. Oh, and it's you keep the nail on the head because it's self-love, it's self-worth. It's, you know, being able to um, feel um, connected enough within yourself and enough love that you trust yourself and you trust your own um, d divine connection. So you, that, that's totally hitting the nail on the head when you said that, Catherine. Yeah, the lionizing of people is, 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 is not good. Like you should not hero worship anyone. You know, you can respect people for, yeah. for the work they've done. You can hold respect for them. But mm -hmm. to, to hero worship, even YouTubers, it makes me uncomfortable sometimes. Like even when I watch some of our fellow colleagues, peers, it, it makes me uncomfortable because we're all human beings. We're, yeah. None of us are really, really more enlightened than the next person. We all have just different perceptions and different experiences and have understood different things from our own, our own sense, our own filtered sense of the world. And we're all, I mean, literally, I hate to keep saying this, but we're literally all walking each other home. Like nobody's 
Nobody's walking in front. We're all together doing this. And again, we can respect each other, but to lionize someone, to put someone on a, a pedestal, to idolize them as if they, they are the gospel, that's what got us into the mess we're in now, right. is that type yeah. of behavior. Yeah. So, and, so we can't do that anymore. Like that can't happen anymore, you know? And when, when, when you're on a pedestal to um, uh, on the other end, you know, there's always this... Um, thing that happens where at some point you'll get dropped and you'll fall off the pedestal and then you go down to the other extreme and, and so there's that sort of thing that happens where um, you, you at some point you get dropped off the pedestal and then and then you're at this lower level so it's yeah there's no balance in that mm. yeah David, I mean, where are you feeling you're at at the moment personally is that directed at me? Yeah, to you, sorry to you, David. Yeah. Uh, just, just to touch on what you guys have said. I think that it's funny. With, it's funny when you put videos out. People tend to think that you know the answer to everything. I'm sure you've all received emails and saying, "Hey, um, help me solve this problem." And I'm like, I don't have all the answers. I just this is what I would do. But you know, seriously, it's just one person's opinion. You know, <laughs> like I'm just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even really, you know, you don't have to do that either. But. Uh, in, term, in terms of where I'm at now, after the after the uh, the psychic attack, I've just kind of really kind of stepped back and taken taken a step back from a lot of things. I haven't posted on Facebook in in weeks. Uh, I haven't really except our chat, videos. except our chat. <laughs> yeah, except our chat. Um, yeah. and I haven't been watching many things either. And I find that I go through these stages of about two years where I can go intense, intense research into all this stuff. And then I have to have a pretty long break. So it happened from 2013, 14, up until about 2015 or 16. So it was a bit longer than, than two years. But then I had like 2017 and 18 off pretty much mm -hmm. uh, until, or even 2019, until, you know, till 2020. So I think I'm at that stage now where I have to have a pretty long break because I just can't handle it anymore. Uh, and just yeah. kind of focus on, you know, obviously keep an ear to the ground and, and, see what's happening or what you think is happening and don't give up and you, you play your music to raise your frequency don't you Dave like that that's how you that's your thing that you yeah. do to, to really feel good is that right yeah music? yeah that's what's one of the things that takes me into the flow state and I can I can lose I can lose hours in you know in what seems like minutes um but I think it's it's a fine line there's a bit of a fine line to be to be uh walked between focusing on yourself too much at the same time as like connecting with yourself too much without focusing on yourself too much if, that's, yeah. if that makes sense you know it's, it's not an easy thing to juggle i don't think but uh, you know we're in very strange times so there's no it's not a dress rehearsal you know <laughs> no one's ever done this before so yeah. i saw a few little clips that I have seen, which have really provoked me to sort of think about the whole situation, because it's so easy to get your your focus on a certain area of stuff that there's no way at the moment that that I as an individual can back up whether it's true or not. So take the Ukraine situation. So I've seen some really really interesting snippets coming out about it, and I have no way of backing up intellectually which is right and which is wrong and and actually from what i've seen ukraine is such a huge country and it's very like like australia look at australia you know you two are in very different areas of australia and are facing very different challenges at the moment and even the united kingdom which is a tiny country compared to both all three of yours where you live huge differences in different areas of the country in terms of what people are experiencing and even an hour apart you know out in the countryside where I am I've had a completely different experience than someone that's living in a city centre so it it's really fascinating about how quickly your attention can be drawn to something and you can focus on that so I did find myself being quite protective over you know I was seeing everyone on social media putting the pictures of the Ukraine and pay for Ukraine, pray for Ukraine and everything. And I've got nothing against praying for anywhere. I think that's positive, whatever you're praying for. But again, you know, me as an individual, 
even though I know people who've got friends there, I, I don't know and stand standing in the situation. I'm never going to know what's happening with Putin, probably personally. I'm unlikely to ever personally meet him and everything. So I think you've hit on such an important point there, David, about it's a it's a constant work in progress. You don't want to be completely self-centered and not care about anything else. But I've been in actual worry all my life. There's no point worrying about something that I can't do anything about it. It's back to that simple equation. If you're worrying about something, can you influence it? Yes. OK, do something positive about it. No, stop worrying about it because worrying is just putting out negative energy there into the planet. And it's that fine, constant reminder, isn't it? Something's happening. Can I personally do something to affect it? Yes or no? Yes, do something positive. No, okay, don't worry about it. You stop putting negative energy towards it. Does that make sense? Yes, Absolutely. and just learn, learning to trust your gut. You know, this whole intuition thing is such an opportunity now to learn how to trust your intuition and, and, and read your intuition and, and, and sort of feel into what, what it's telling you. Because for, for years now, I've been um, getting messages that Putin is, is working with the, the good guys and, and, and he's on the positive side of things. And I tried to tell my family a couple of years ago and I got shot down big time because they're buying all the, you know, the mainstream narrative about it but you know that is my intuition talking to me really clearly that this person is working for the good and um I just got that so strongly from my intuition from my gut nobody told me that and I've had it for years and it's just gets stronger so that's what I trust when something you said David about like I get that having to take a break sometimes and like for me I'm such a I would say type A, but I'm O negative blood, but I'm such a type A personality where I want to just keep going, keep going that something sometimes does have to happen where it forces me to like sit down and relax. But it's, it's interesting. So like we talk about this in the practice of Ashtanga where we get, we call it, they're not adjustments, they're cranks. You get cranked in this class where literally bones will pop. And they're, they're, it's like, I always tell people when I see my, my teacher's feet coming towards me in class, it's always like the Jaws theme song plays in my head because I know I'm about to get like manhandled basically. But what happens though is when the teacher is constantly adjusting you to change these patterns in your body day after day after day after day, eventually the teacher has to back off for a while to allow all of that to process through your system. And so I think what you're saying, David, is actually really, really healthy mm -hmm. about like, you're going like balls to the wall, research, 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 understanding, understanding, and then having to like step back for a moment. It's not that you're really burnt out or that something that you're doing something bad. No, you're allowing everything to process through your consciousness because the body itself is the mind field. And we're human beings are super simple, but also super complex at the same time, because we're working with consciousness, mind, which are two totally different things, soul, spirit, natural body, nervous system, gut. Feel. We've got so much we're working with that in order for everything to really move through us to have that deep guttural understanding sometimes we have to sit back and let it let it root run through our system you know it's like it's why sometimes people need to take time to think about something because they need to actually let it filter through their understanding and so I think that's really actually really healthy what you brought up David is for people to understand and maybe it's our culture in the western world today where it's like keeping up with the joneses and we're constantly having to do more do more be more be more work harder work harder um that we've forgotten that we actually have to let things settle sometimes mm -hmm. And so if you're feeling overwhelmed or you feel like you need to take a break, it's not necessarily a break. It's a time for things to filter through you. And I, okay, maybe it is a break because we always tell people in, in Ashtanga Yoga, Saturday's our rest day, resting is part of the practice too. It's part of it as well. You know, and, 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 and in war, you always go into the med tent at some point. You got to go into the medical tent, right? So, so yeah, I think that's super important what you brought up, David, about pulling back sometimes. And I've had, I mean, Catherine knows I I'm so bad about telling myself I'm going to take a day or, but not doing it that I've actually had to be go, go on the weekends, go up to the mountains where I have no, no reception just to kind of 
force myself to like sit in the nature and the door, North Georgia mountains. Hello. That's where deliverance takes place. If you haven't seen that movie, <laughs> that's a fun one, um, but it is literally like no man's land. You get up in those mountains. Beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous, but it is literally like no man's land. You know, you need so a banjo. You know, <laughs> you know, well, I'll tell you a funny story. So the guy who wrote the book deliverance before it was a movie went to the same high school that I went to way before I went there. Um, and, uh, yeah, he went to that high school and it's about, you know, Deliverance is about these Atlanta boys that go up to the North Georgia mountains for a hunting trip and all sorts of shenanigans happen in the, in Appalachia. Um, but it's funny because if, when you're from Atlanta, they don't, people outside of Atlanta don't really see Atlanta as being part of the South. It's your Atlanta. That's different. That's not part of the South, you know, because it's a city. So yeah, that's a, that's always a squeal like, squeal like a pig boy, squeal like a pig. That's, that's one of the famous lines from that that very scary movie <laughs> so um but yeah oh, don't remind me of that i don't want to go back to that scene <laughs> I feel still want to go there. please i want some sleep tonight i've got a new baby coming i need to sleep before i give birth yeah oh my goodness so okay let's go around the table then starting with men first so that david gets word in edgeways right what is your focus at the moment? What, what, what are you going to concentrate on at the moment? What is big for you? Uh, I think... I think more so, I think really just, like, really just having that break and just allowing yourself to process things and um, not feeling guilty for it because, you know, the, we, all, we all do need it. Like, do you think, like, in it, in a championship game, do you think the champion of the team or the, the multiple champions of the team, they all need a break too. You know, they can't just mm -hmm. keep going balls to the wall and and you know, doing things. And you know, look, putting out content isn't easy either, you know. So it's not to say that anybody who isn't putting out content isn't doing any work, but I'm saying, you know, it's like we all do need a break at, at some point. And you'll know when it's when it's time, you know, like sometimes you just something ticks in your mind and you're like, hey, now now's the time. Maybe it wasn't the time before. Maybe I, I felt like I wanted a break, but I didn't really need one. You know, it's, I find that in my life, there are certain things that happen where it, it's not really, could be a mindset shift, but it's really just a thing that tells you now's the time you are going to do this thing and you are going to dedicate yourself to it or undedicate yourself to it for, how, for however long. And then eventually, naturally, something will happen and you'll, you either pick it back up again or you'll, you know, com completely stop it altogether or whatever it is that, you know, whatever that thing is. So I think it's really important to, to just be mindful of the fact that you don't need to push so hard all the time. Uh, that's not to say drop the ball completely, but, you know, just, just be, I suppose, <laughs> just be and let, let the life, let life flow and do whatever it is that you can to, Mm. to really if you can make a difference in that area whatever it is like you said Catherine then do so but if you can't then you know it's really it's really going to just do you a disservice uh, to keep to keep kind of kicking things over in your mind I, mean, I used to be a chronic over analyzer you know uh, mm -hmm. to the point of to the point of uh, not eating or you know losing sleep and things like that it doesn't happen now but you know that was a, a thing that I had to deal with so I'll just leave it. I'll just leave it there. Mm. What about you, Bryce? My focus, well, I was telling you, Catherine, I think, I don't know if we were on air or off air, where I said, you know, um, as a teacher of philosophy, we often joke about the teacher teaches what the teacher needs to learn. And so my focus literally has been finding that Hanuman, finding, uh, you know, really standing in your own sovereignty. What does that mean to really stay, for me specifically, what does that mean to stand in your sovereignty? what can you do? What, why, what, what, what is it? What is the magic about me? And that's why I bring it to my, my channel as well. Like, especially in the Magdalene series, like what is special about you? What's, where is that unconditional love coming from that, that source God creation? So that's my focus this week is um, really, really remembering what's the famous line from the Ramayana that Hanuman says, when I don't remember who I am, I serve you. When I remember who I am, I am you. Mm. Medina, what about you? 
Well, <clears throat> I'd just like to mention too, I've, I've got um, sessions available for people at the minute um, and, and below I'm going to have a 10% uh, discount code for people. So, you know, there's, there's a real um, demand at the moment for people to be working on themselves and to be shifting things so that they can move forward in all these energies. So if anyone would like to work with me, please feel welcome to contact me. I have availability now to work with new clients. And um, also I do have a few mentorship programs available for people to, to work with um, as well, learning spiritual uh, healing and, and energy work and that sort of thing as well. So, you know, if that resonates, please contact me. But what, what I'm working on at the moment too is, um, the thing that comes to me is to be sending um, love and, and compassion and prayers to different parts around the world that need it. I've got a beautiful little prayer here, if I could share, um, that I think is beautiful and timely. You know, when we think of what's happening in Australia at the moment, um, can you see that? Um, yeah. So it's God, we need you. We always have. You are our source of strength and you tell us to give you all our concerns. So please strengthen anyone who is feeling hurt, alone or broken. Replace any feelings of anxiety, fear and uncertainty with your peace and hope. Show anyone who is hurting that you are near and you comfort those who call on you. Draw near to us as we draw near to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So just having that compassion and that prayerful thought for all the people in the world who are going through challenges and sending them love, um, that, that's my thing at the moment. Mm. I'd just my, like to add. Pardon? Sorry, sorry, Catherine. I'd just like to add something which just popped into my head when Nina said that. Uh, in that, I sent Catherine some, some, uh, some pictures yesterday. One of the lyrics in one of the songs, which is called The Resistance, is that is love is our resistance that's that's the lyric and i think it's really it's really powerful and obviously very very uh obviously very needed right now but it is it really is a resistance you know just vibrating at the love frequency it doesn't even have to be that high it could be a little bit less than love frequency but it would would really shift the world definitely yeah and mine is I saw a beautiful couple this morning who've got a dog that's got um, very aggressive cancer. And I was going through all the things that I have to be careful what I say here that you're not allowed to do in terms of all the natural remedies and treatments. And it was like, that is my heart and soul in terms of to sort of really show people how much they can do themselves and Bryce and I have been doing a, a series and we're continuing to do one on meditation and also manifestation and and the two fit together so much and I've been putting um, a lot of focus on my own personal meditation and and what I'm seeing is that everything around you shifts when you do that. And we've been sort of talking through different techniques with people because there can be quite a lot of resistance to that. But what it really showed me this morning is that whatever was in my diary when this came up would have been canceled for that because it's the right here, right now with the fact that, that, that these healing modalities are out there and they're available and, and the the state of the world at the moment where we're restricted. You know, I've got prosecution, threats against me for sharing some of these natural remedies on my website and things like this. And I'm just like, I don't care. I'm just going to keep sharing them because the answers are all there. The answers are all there in everything that we've all talked about tonight. And I think it's it's just reminding people there and then being there for them when you need it and 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 sharing that and and passing it forward, I think shifts everything very quickly. Mm. So we'll be back in two weeks' time for in, any of us on here that want to join us. Um, and and equally, if any of us need a break, that's absolutely fine as well because <laughs> it's very early for some, <laughs> very late for some of us. And we really appreciate everyone that watches, don't we? Because we are just, for me, this is a conversation between friends. We don't have any answers it's a conversation between some, you know, you are my very, very dear friends, all of you. And we appreciate each and every one of you that takes the time to listen and comment and support each other in the chat and share your wisdom. 
absolutely. Thank you, Medina. Make sure you send us that code, won't you, to all of us. We can all put it under sure. the video because that's lovely that you're offering a discount to 10% off to anyone um, with the code that we'll share under here. So until oh. next time, thank you all very much. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.